So at this point, there's now hours of welding that needs to get done, and it's really tempting just to jump in and just start welding everything up. Weld all the brackets on the diff, weld all the chassis rail, uh, side plates, and just get really stuck into it. But it's probably best, I've never actually tested the movement of this suspension because that original chassis rail was always in the way. So I think the best method now is I'll get the rest of the brackets tacked onto the diff. We'll actually set the diff back up with all the four links and the panard and the um, coilovers in place and we'll move everything through its motions and make sure that what technically is still a theory actually works quite nice. And if I'm happy with how everything works, which I'm 95% sure should be fine, if I'm happy, then we start the hours of welding. But yeah, it's always nice to double check um, physically that uh, the ideas have worked. So, so let's get those brackets onto the diff, put it back into the car, run it through its motions and see how this four link actually works. Cool. So here's the bracket for the bottom lower control arm and this upper control arm here I could only have one half of the bracket on because the chassis rail was literally here. So we got to chuck this other side of that bracket on now, tuck it in place and then put it back in. Right, they're all tacked up, had a sweep under the car. Let's get this beast back in and give it a test run. So far, so good. Things are moving up and down fairly well. Uh, I have run into a small issue. I forgot about this. And so this is where test fits uh, come in pretty handy. So let's have a quick look. So I use the OEM mount for this uh, lower control arm. And this section here needs to come out because the lower control arm's hitting uh, that piece on top there. So we'll have to notch her out the way and uh, that should give us plenty of movement for what we're doing. Right, so pretty happy with that. We've got clearances on everything that needed clearances now and move the suspension through uh, its movement uh, with the shocks in place so that shows you the maximum height and maximum uh, droop that this car will run and pretty happy with it um, yeah pretty excited so we'll move it up and down and you guys can see how it all works
I've been messing about, moving things up and down, up and down flat, up and down each side of the wheel, and I'm really happy with how it's all working. So uh, it's um, been a lot of messing about, a lot of information stuck in my head, and I've been able to get out and actually build it, and yeah, I'm pretty stoked with the outcome, to be honest. Um, so as you can see in one of the shots there, this pinion angle, <clears throat> as you travel up and down through that suspension movement, the pinion angle doesn't change, it just stays at that constant setting. Um, I've currently got it just nose down about a degree. Um, and you can finally tune that with the lengths of the top arms. So you could change your pinion angle just a little bit by tuning the top arm if you wanted to. But I sort of set it up for that one degree down and as it moves through the whole suspension travel um, of the distance of the shock there, we keep the same angle, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, you can't do that with an unequal length end. So, <clears throat> yeah, pretty stoked with how it's all come together. Done all my test runs. I'm happy with how that's all turned out. My clearances are tight, but I've got clearance everywhere, mainly on the uh, spring perches here and where my um, panard mount comes up next to the chassis rail there. We're definitely low enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, the car's going to be very, very low at full compression, um, but that's what we were aiming for, and that's exactly what we have. So the tyres that I'm testing are a fairly low profile. I might just bump the profile up um, to a, a higher profile just to um, give me a bit more tyre under the car, perhaps. But either way, uh, very happy, pretty stoked with how it's all come together. Everything's tacked in place, so now we've got quite a few hours of welding. So, I might get started on that. Diff's in the way from me getting to some of the other welds, and I need it out anyway because I'm going to weld up all of the brackets that are tacked in place. So, I'll pull the diff. So, I have a little bit of an issue. Uh, while welding these up, I sent a few photos of the uh, five link rear end, including the panard rod, over to a far more intelligent, far wiser person than myself. He had a good look and he's like, Tommy Dunkhouse looks great, but, big but, why is your panard rod so high? Well, because I'm building a fashion car and in my mind the whole time I've been trying to make sure the car's low enough. So I put the panard rod up on top of the diff. Um, a lot of research that I've done into panard rods talk about these two points need to be in exactly the right location and the longer the rod normally the better that it can be and all these things. and. I, I ticked all those boxes, but what I didn't take into account is the roll center of the car. And what this technically means with the live axle rear end, the, where the car rolls, that pivoted point, that roll center is actually in your panard rod. And because I've got it sitting way up here, um, the top of the car is gonna roll around like this really, really badly actually. Um, so it's a completely wrong spot to have it. Now, I should know this, I should know better, um, but building the four link rear end for the first time, I was focused a lot on the, the side view of the car and roll centers that way, and um, I was trying to get the car low because I'm trying to be cool, and yeah, I just it just 
slipped my mind, I guess. I, I didn't pay attention to the importance of the roll centre of the actual Panard rod. So the good part about this story is I'm only tacked in. I haven't welded a single thing. I'm only tapped. So all this work that we did, unfortunately, like really nice um, uh, notching work there by the nephews and, you know, lots of time and effort into the brackets. It was all for nothing, but at least it wasn't fully welded and I was, you know, cutting off stuff that uh, I'd spent hours welding as well. So that's a bit of a saving grace, but um, it's a, a part of the build that I looked over and thankfully I've got people around me who are far smarter and uh, able to go, hey, look, Tommy, I think you've uh, missed that step there, mate, and I'm forever grateful for that. Um, so, yeah. That means all this comes off, the panard comes off, the mount on the diff comes off, and we mount it literally down here. Now, I've done the chassis rails, and they're a lot stronger and a lot more sturdy than I thought they were going to be. Um, I think a lot of the issue of me ending up with um, my panard rod here is, while I was building, I had the idea of, uh, planning, sorry, while I was planning, I had the idea of, what if the car didn't exist and I was building a buggy? Where would my tubes go uh, if I wasn't dealing with the chassis of a 30-something-year-old rusty van? Um, and I wanted to build all my suspension points off of the cage itself as if it was a dirt buggy. Uh, so I looked at a lot of dirt buggy pictures. I, I looked at a lot of stuff from the guys that um, do the mini trucks that sit them on the ground with the airbag suspension. And um, through looking through all those things, I've, I've sort of lost track of uh, the roll center and the importance of that. Um, so yes, so not to worry, you get that on these uh, these builds. I have a lot in my head. I've drawn lots on whiteboards and done things and stayed up late looking at stuff and watching way too much information. And it's just one small part that I missed. So we will uh, get to fixing that and the car will drive better. Now this, for me, this is my version of what I call a fashion car. Um, it's important that it's low because I think that looks cool and I'm compromising lots of different areas just for it to be low. So this isn't meant to be a, um, a flat out track car. It's not meant to be smashing track records and beating hill climbs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I have another car that's dedicated to that and that's nowhere near this low, if anything, it's standard height. So that is one aspect of this build is we are compromising the performance of the car just to look good. Um, that normally goes against my grain, but um, for drifting, I think that's actually a really big aspect of drifting. It's got to look cool while you're, you're sliding sideways next to your mate who's, who's uh, slammed on the rails as well. I think that's a big part of it. It's, it's you putting on a show for people to come out and uh, see you sliding around. And if you can make the car that little bit more interesting by doing this level, I think it's worth it. Um, we'll still try and rip some lap times in it. Uh, the boys, you know, uh, were interested to see, hey, can we even take this thing drag racing? It was really cool to see the way that their minds are starting to work that, hey, we get to drive a performance track car and it doesn't just mean drifting, and it doesn't just mean a low-speed motor car or in a thing like, hey, perhaps we could take it drifting, perhaps we could take it up a hill climb, perhaps we could take it drag racing. It's like, hey, can we take this drag racing, Uncle Tommy? And it's just like, yeah, we can take it drag racing. Um, so it's cool. It's really cool to see them starting to understand what it means to have a track car. I don't think it's fully set in yet. Uh, once we start heading out to the track and they're the ones playing with the car, I, I really think it's going to be a good time. I myself are looking forward to it. So, there we go. A bit of a uh, bit of a big miss by myself and something I didn't take into consideration. But at the same time, at this stage of where we're at, it's a um, fairly straightforward fix. So, out with the grinder again and out with trying to make some more brackets. Now, I've already made the panard rod, so um, I'll try to keep that. Where I'm going, I could have gone longer um, because I didn't have this bend here determining where that ended up. Um, so I could have gone a longer panard, 
But, I mean, looking at the distance between the chassis rails, that's where the panard's going to be travelling with how low the, the diff is. Uh, this length's probably okay, if I set it up correctly this time. Um, it should do the job that I need it to do. Thanks for watching, guys. That's the end of this video. Um, please, uh, chuck some comments down below. Let me know uh, what you're liking about the build. Let me know what you're not liking about the build. Um, Pick me up on silly mistakes that I'm making. Tony Dunkhouse, your roll center's too high. Fix it. Stuff like that. If there's an aspect of the build that you're interested in and uh, you'd like me to cover it a bit more, chuck that down in the comments. You know, if you want to have a, a, a closer look at an aspect of where we're up to at the moment or where we're going, those sorts of things, let me know. So, uh, yeah, cheers for watching. Um, and we'll see you on the next video.